I have heard so much about you two from Skyler. <laughs> really? Uh, like, like what? Oh, I'm sorry, not really. That's just something I say to all the parents. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Scholars, welcome back to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist, a master educator, and I'm here to provide you with the best I can in art historical content. And if you like the content, you know, like, share, subscribe, or any of that sort of thing, any interaction is really decent. And remember, it's always free. Oh, look, one little question, I'll let you all go. Are you all together? Or is it separate checks? Which oh, no way? No way! You know, on any form of social media, we have our loyal subscribers, and there are many. Now, I will say this there are many people that are watching that are not subscribing, and, uh, you know, I'd like to see that, uh, you know, if you're watching, you know, it doesn't hurt anything just to subscribe. But anyway, I've got a fellow that uh, has been subscribed and following for quite some time. A gentleman by the name of Moose. And Mr. Moose would like to see some content on an artist by the name of Pete Mondrian. And, uh, well, I'm not one to uh, pass up an opportunity <laughs> to tell a story. So, let's get on with it. One of the truly great geometric abstraction artists of all time was, was the somewhat dry Pete Mondrian. He was the second born of five children and his dad, Peter Cornelius Sr., was the principal of an elementary school and also had some amateur art experience. His dad's brother, his uncle Fritz Mondrian, was his first professional inspiration, becoming a commercially successful yet not extensively formally trained painter. Now you'll notice that his last name has two A's in 1911. Pete Mondrian would drop the second A, but at any rate, his father and uncle gave the young Pete a nice beginning to his development as an artist. As a teenager, Pete's art development was taken on by the retired art teacher, Bate Van Eberfeld, as it was the intention of Pete to be trained so that he could become an art teacher, the only way his father saw it possible to make a living as an artist. In 1892, the young 20-year-old artist gave up education to focus his energy on becoming a professional artist alone. With the help of his uncle Fritz, he would attend the National Academy of Arts in Amsterdam. Once you do that, you're pretty much locked in, huh? Yeah, right. Okay, thank you. As Mondrian was gaining his higher education, he was focusing his artistic energies toward painting landscapes. As time passed, those landscapes got more and more abstracted. He would begin to omit details and simplify the design. The emotion of beauty is always obstructed by the appearance of the object. Therefore, the object must be eliminated from the picture. The more abstracted he got, the more attention he received for the work. At the same time, he was also receiving more criticism for his work. For example, his work on trees would evolve more and more into simple horizontal and vertical lines, very much being inspired by the Cubists George Brock and Pablo Picasso. He chose to move toward the art center of the world, which at that time was Paris, France. In 1912, he would make that move and quickly become an internationally famous artist. Now, old Uncle Fritz, he had two major issues with his nephew's new art career. Number one, he disliked the abstraction that he was moving toward, and as a more pressing issue, that Pete began to sign his name Mondrian minus the A, as previously mentioned. And as he got more and more abstracted, he would climax with that abstraction with his work Composition A. This work was the first work of his kind, using black-lined outlines, neutral grounds with primary colors. 
Now, works like this would actually take him quite some time because, little known fact, Pete Mondrian did not use a ruler to draw the lines. He drew them all by hand. Everyone knows when you make an assumption, you make an ass out of you, an assumption. When World War I broke out in 1914, he was in Holland visiting his dying father. Obviously, he was not quickly available to travel back to Paris. He made Lauren Holland somewhat known as a artist community, a temporary home as he worked with other artists such as Art Vanderleek and Theo van Doesburg. This friendship with these artists would grow, and specifically with Van Doesburg, he began to assemble a group of artists that collaborated in the creation of a magazine known as The Stiel, or The Style. And along with the magazine, they would start a whole artistic movement that is also synonymous with neoplasticism. Although Mondrian was deeply bonded with his fellow artists at this time, he was driven and in 1919 he would return to Paris. And it was there that he met Harry Holtzman, an American artist. Holtzman would eventually aid Mondrian in a trip to the United States. Most feel that this trip to America for Mondrian was perhaps his finest experience as an artist. During this time frame, the art center was shifting from Paris to New York, and Pete Mondrian was also shifting from Europe to New York where he would end up in October of 1940. Prior to this trip, he was placed on the Degenerate Art Show by Adolf Hitler. The Degenerate Art Show of 1937 included 650 works by a wide range of artists that were seen as a cultural threat to Germany and German culture, and so, being seen as a threat to Germany, Mondrian was placed on that list. My mom always said, Life was like a box of chocolates. Now Mondrian would borrow some money from Holtzman that allowed him to get to the United States and during that time he had all but quit the De Stiel art movement because co-founder Van Doesburg began to introduce diagonal lines and Mondrian wanted none of that sort of craziness. Far and above my favorite of all of Mondrian's works Broadway Boogie Woogie. The title reflects his love for New York and his love for jazz piano style that was popular at that time, his organization, but also his use of primary colors, completely omitting the black lines that he had been using prior. The placement of these patches of color resemble a street scene from above. It almost reminds me of the 1980s classic arcade game Frogger. I mean, the blocky graphics, the bright colors, the look of the traffic and the whole bit. You know, you throw in a frog in a river and you've got Frogger. You know, it's interesting. Mondrian once said, Every true artist has been inspired more by the beauty of lines and colors than the relationship between them than the concrete subject of the picture. At the time of his passing, he was working on a follow-up to Broadway Boogie Woogie that was called Victory Boogie Woogie. This would be the last work that he would begin to construct, although it was never completed. He would pass in New York and was actually buried at Cypress Hill in Brooklyn. In his will, Pete Mondrian would disinherit his younger brother in favor of his young art friend that helped him seek a better life in America specifically Harry Holtzman, who was the sole heir of his estate. Mondrian's works have inspired so many people that were coming up beyond those years. We see influences from other artists that were working with geometric abstraction as well as influences in fashion. For example, Yves Saint Laurent, the fashion designer, created a whole Mondrian series in 1966 and in more contemporary times, the music group The White Stripes would title their second studio album De Stiel because they were so much influenced by Pete Mondrian and the work that he was doing. I've got an idea. And as students see his work and they appreciate his work, I always get students that say, ah, you know, I want to do something like that. I want to make some abstract stuff. But let us not forget that Pete Monrion learned how to paint by the rules. He learned the structure of painting. He learned the process of painting. And then he took those rules and he broke them. He learned them so he knew how to break them properly, 
still allowing his artworks to have structure and form and beauty and all of those elements that really make his artworks fantastic. Well, Mr. Moose and anybody else that got this far, I love telling you that story and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoy bringing it to you. And uh, speaking of bringing things to you, keep in mind that there is Mr. Burger Art 101 with Mr. Burger merch available for my friends at redbubble.com. You can check out a link down in the description. And there's all kinds of other little tidbits down there for you. Anyway, I appreciate you. You have yourself a good day. See you next time. When I was your age, television was called books.